today I'm going to be reading from John chapter 13, uh, verse 21 through to verse 28. I'm just going to draw out some ideas here. Now, verse 21 says this. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray, betray me. Verse 22. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. Can we just think about that for a second? You've got these disciples that have spent pretty much the last, better part of the last three years, day in, day out, with the Messiah, seeing miracles, signs and wonders. And Jesus drops this bomb of truth. And he says, truly, truly, one of you will betray me. Now, this left 11 at the table reeling in uncertainty. Um, they were all asking one another, am I the betrayer? Hey, you know, John, did you share that thing I shared with you in confidence, that, that moment of doubt? I was just freaking out, man. I'm all good now. Like, you know, am I the betrayer? There's this insecurity that's birthed by this statement that Jesus makes. And it's pretty incredible to think that we can be walking so closely with Jesus and yet, struggle to trust our love for him but then it goes on to say in verse 23 one of his disciples whom Jesus loved was reclining at the table on Jesus's chest verse 24 so Simon Peter motioned him and asked of whom Jesus was speaking it's another great point here they are at the table they're freaking out yet there is one disciple who has positioned himself in intimacy. You see, often when we see someone who's positioned in intimacy, we go to that person for the revelation we seek from God. We make an idol out of their relationship instead of realizing that we've been called into the same relationship, that we can have the same intimacy. These disciples, Simon Peter, was sitting literally feet away from Jesus Christ. Yet he leans in and motions somewhat secretly to John. Jesus loves you, man. You're special to him, man. What Peter's actually saying is, I don't believe that I'm loved here. I don't know if I am as special as you. He's making a declaration of his misunderstanding of God's heart and his life. And he's trying to live vicariously through the intimacy of John. There's a really important message here, guys. So that disciple, John, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Here's the kicker, verse 26. Jesus answered, it is he to whom I give this morsel of bread when I've dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said, what you were going to do Go and do quickly. Now, verse 28, no one at the table knew why Jesus said, to this, said this to him. Isn't that incredible? That we don't know whether John told Simon Peter who it was because John in his intimate position um, was given the revelation through relationship through understanding, knowing, and trusting his position in Christ. We don't know if he relayed it to Simon Peter or if he didn't. But what we do know is this. Simon Peter had the opportunity to position himself in intimacy. Yet he chose to live vicariously through John, asked John to ask God for a revelation. This gives John the, the opportunity to press even deeper into God's presence and gets a revelation. And even if he had shared it, it wouldn't have been owned by Simon Peter's heart. He wouldn't have known it. He would have heard it. It wouldn't have emanated in his heart. Guys, I want to encourage you. Don't live vicariously, relationally through the Christians you see or deem as more intimate as you. Don't be jealous. Don't be competitive. Be inspired. I want to encourage you, if you see someone who is walking in a deep relationship with God that you want, ask them what they do, how they do it. But it all costs 
Just press into God for yourself. Be inspired. Don't be jealous. Be challenged. Don't go to them for answers. Go and ask them how they find their answers and emulate a relationship with God that's powerful to the world. The 11 disciples, they were feet away from Jesus, wondering, sitting, fearing in anxiety and uncertainty. But there was one, the scripture says, that was leaning on the chest of Jesus. And he got to hear God's heartbeat for the situation and wasn't living in, in, in anxiety. Lord, I just pray that for anyone who watches this, that they would see and be challenged and motivated to step into relationship with you on a whole new level, Father, that, that they would be challenged uh, and motivated to stop idolizing the relationships and intimacy they see in others and find it for themselves. Holy Spirit, I just pray you bless them, give them peace beyond, under, beyond understanding, and would you just touch their hearts today? Thanks for tuning in, guys.